what has changed in Misra C 2012? What are the things that, that have changed in the whole uh, establishment of guidelines and, and, and in the environment? I want to uh, just uh, survey the major changes without going into too much detail. The first thing you will notice if you acquire a new copy of the MISRA C2012 standard, if you're familiar with the previous version, the 2004 version, you'll notice it's bigger. Yes, there are a few more rules. There are 159 instead of 142. But the main difference, the main reason for the increase in size is probably not the increase in the number of rules, but the fact that quite a lot of work has gone into the content of the rules and the explanation. We will go into that in a bit more detail in a moment. Much of the content of the rules is actually unchanged. Many, many of the guidelines are much as they used to be. They may have been reworded. They may be rather better specified now and the numbering of them unfortunately will have changed. Um, that was uh, an un, uh, unavoidable consequence really of all the revisions that were done. Um, much of the structure of the rules is the same but unfortunately the rule numbers have changed. One consequence of the new standard is that legacy code which has been compliant with MISRA 2004 will not necessarily be compliant with MISRA 2012. We don't expect the changes to be all that onerous in terms of bringing legacy code up to the new standard, but there are a few new requirements. Now probably the main focus of initiative in bringing out a new standard was the development of the C language over the last few years. MISRA C at its roots was based on what we call the, the C90 standard, the version of the C language which was standardized in 1990. And the important thing about this version of the language is that it has been, by virtue of its longevity, it is very well supported by compilers and tools. The problems in the language are well understood. The disadvantages of C90 are that there are some limitations. It doesn't, for instance, have a Boolean type, which is a fairly fundamental defect, really, of the language. In 1999, there was a uh, the C90 version was superseded by new standardization of language and this addressed some of those limitations by introducing type bool, it introduced inline functions. The problem with standardization is that often new features are added which are, uh, which are well worthwhile. The, the, the problem is that many of the dangers which were in the original version of the language are preserved. It's far easier to introduce new features than it is to eliminate dangers. And C99, for all its merits, unfortunately has more dangers than C90. The other aspect to recognize is that even today compilers do not necessarily support all features of C99. That is certainly still true in the sphere of embedded compilers. More recently still, a further standardization of the C language took place in 2011. And that version of the standard is still obviously relatively new in terms of the evolution of these things and the tool support for C11 is actually very limited. So what has MISRA C's policy been? C90 has been the preferred version of the language up until now, but 
the third version of the MISRA C guidelines has finally acknowledged, some may say a bit late, but has finally acknowledged the existence of C99. And it now, C99 is now fully supported by the new version of MISRA C. The, the way in which the rules are presented in the new version of MISRA C has been developed quite significantly. And quite a lot of effort has gone into actually improving the presentation, improving the explanation. So things like the headline text in some cases. Um, the rule has been clarified simply by changes to the headline text. But also, we now have a structure where there is a formal amplification section because in many cases the description of the rule in the headline is not adequate to give a full understanding of what the rule is getting at. We also have a rationale section which describes the reasoning behind the rule. Why is the guideline necessary? The code examples have been expanded considerably. And sometimes there is a paragraph which refers to exceptions to the rule because in a number of guidelines there are circumstances where it makes no sense perhaps to insist on enforcement of that rule. There are legitimate exception conditions. One area which may be slightly disorienting to existing users of MISRA C is the terminology. And one of the weaknesses of MISRA C 2004 was in the way in which it described the problem of implicit type conversions and explicit type conversions. MISRA C 2004 introduced a terminology. It introduced terms like underlying type, complex expression, effectively Boolean. And those terms were introduced for a very good reason, but unfortunately they weren't always described or defined uh, very accurately, or uh, the, the definitions of those terms were sometimes a bit loose. That has all been tightened up in MISRA C 2012. But in the process, the terminology has actually been changed somewhat because the original terms led to some confusion. So underlying type has now been superseded by the term essential type. Complex expression has been superseded by the term composite expression. Effectively Boolean is now superseded by essentially Boolean. And the new document actually defines these terms uh, very precisely uh, and it also extends the definition to the full range of integer types, including things like enums and bit fields. So many of the rules in MISRA 2004, which were slightly complicated to say the least, particularly Rule 10.1 for instance, are I think much better expressed in the new standard and much more precisely defined. 